Yes, the hamburger business is big business. And Wimpy is the biggest name in that business. So big, in fact, that we cannot afford to slip up. The bigger they come... But what we don't know sometimes is what the customer sees and thinks. We don't know because we are perhaps too close to the job and we can't see the wood for the trees. Wimpy is a family. And like any other family, if Uncle Bill down in Middle Muddlecombe blots the family copybook, then it rubs off on Cousin Fred up in Prize Town. Today, when more and more people are buying cars and are travelling further on the roads, nothing is more important to us than a wimpy image that is uniformly good. Let's not kid ourselves over just why we are in this business. We are in business for profit through service. And the more good sense, yes sense, we apply to that business, the greater our profits will be. We have already seen what lack of sense towards the customer can produce. probably do the same, wouldn't we? Out of the door goes profit. We all know that profit just does not happen. It is made. And if we don't exploit our profitability to the full, then it constitutes a loss. Loss. An unhappy word with considerably more in it than meets the eye. And you're quite right. There is some writing on the wall. Four points that are guaranteed to put any wimpy owner on the slippery slope. Point number one, laxity of person. Nothing is quite so off-putting as the lack of attention to person. No, she's used all the soaps and taken all the little tablets and things. It's because she's scruffy. If the staff doesn't look neat and tidy, then you can put your shirt on it that neither does the boss. In a sense, personal appearance is a mirror, and in it there are seen other laxities that are both real and imagined. Laxity in appearance spreads to the behaviour. If we get up late and skip the shave, then we are not likely to greet the customer with the warmth that he expects. If the waitress is down at heel or is careless about her grooming, then she's not likely to worry about whether the customer's food is left around to get cold, or whether his bill is made out properly. What's that? Never missed a shave in your life? All right then, let's move on to point number two. Overlooking the obvious. For some customers, of course, like to smoke, and so perhaps do we. Uh, but wait a minute, we are not that profitable. Not yet. To the smoker, the ashtray is a friendly thing, when you've filled it yourself. But other people's, especially in a restaurant, ooh. Yes, we get familiar with our immediate surroundings and we begin not to see. It's not only the ashtrays. It's the sauce dispenser, the general state of the tables, the griddle, the milk and orange machines, and all the other details which are simply overlooked because the gaze is too high. Out of the windows, perhaps searching for the next customer. But don't forget, the customer looks in. Point number three, and what an important one this is. Hands are very useful instruments, and they may be very clean, but they're not the right ones for popping the buns into the toaster. Should he see this, the customer may not scream, but he will certainly squirm. He has hands too, but he knows when he last washed his. A nice pair of lips across the counter may well fetch the boys in, but a nice pair of lips left on the glasses and cups doesn't possess quite the same magic. And if Miss Lipsticky Cup is around, Mr. Grudley Fork with his fine store of germs between the prongs is not usually far away. <laughs> Sloppy shop. 
Last, but by no means the least. General impressions are formed in the mind almost instantly. Just take a look at this. Grubby windows and a clutter of stickers, some of which are quite irrelevant to the business. Well, we can hardly blame him for thinking that the lease had expired. If we do manage to get him inside for a moment, is the impression any better? With poor decorations, untidiness, faulty lighting, inefficient ventilation, and mucky menus, we very much doubt it. For him, the name of Wimpy is out forever. We are not suggesting that there are Wimpy bars that conform entirely to this pattern. But we have researched the subject, and we now have a detailed knowledge of what the customer will and will not take. Furthermore, we know beyond all doubt that any one of these faults, however small, is sufficient to send a customer away for all time. Naturally, our reason for winning the customer and keeping him is because he is profitable and profitable in proportion to his numbers. Well, there's a bit more of our clever stuff here, and it's our six-point plan for exploiting profitability to the full. Number one, personal points. Remember that it's always the boss who sets the standard and tone of each individual wimpy bar and that his staff will quite naturally adopt his own level of performance. Make sure your uniforms are changed at least daily and more often if you notice them grubby. Personal appearance is always vital. It is basic. It reflects a frame of mind that is the mainspring from which all our other points are motivated. All right? And you, chef, make sure your hat is neatly fitted and your hair tidy. It makes all the difference. A clean, neat and well-groomed appearance makes us feel good. It makes us exuberant, and as a result, the customer feels genuinely welcome. No girls, don't be exuberant in the corner. This way, if you please. Now that we're in the right frame of mind, we're ready for the right approach, and it's detail, detail, detail all the way. It's the ashtray that cannot be emptied and cleaned too frequently. It's our notorious friend, the sauce dispenser, which must be kept spotless and free from crusting. Likewise, the tables and chairs, which must be cleaned off immediately after use and made ready for the next customer. Most important is the griddle, where the customers can see their hamburgers being cooked. Frequent cleaning to get rid of burnt debris and grease splutters is an absolute must. And while we're on the griddle, how about the cooking smells? Has the ventilation filter been kept clean and efficient and not just forgotten about like this one? The bright work of the cold and hot drink machines requires frequent attention too. And it's surprising how an extra sparkle in this direction will cause an extra tinkle in another. Hot sales. Hot hamburgers. And that's the way the customer likes them. So let's keep him happy and see that he gets his order immediately. The right approach. It's the attention to detail. It's a little extra thought. It's common sense. If the approach is right, then a good overall impression should follow without much difficulty. First of all, the first impression. Have we been outside recently to take a good look? Do the windows need a clean? How about the sides? Are they up to scratch? And has the illumination been checked? Is the lighted menu well placed? And are the windows clear of any unnecessary clutter? Now let's go inside and get an overall impression as the customer sees it. Well, this looks all right. Recent decoration, everywhere clean and bright. And, what is most important, no bulbs gone. Overall deterioration is a relatively slow process. 
day by day it is not readily noticed, particularly the fall off in illumination. A frequent clean-up of lamp housings and the replacement of aging tubes is well worth the effort. Look at the before and after effect here. Creeping degeneration is a lethargic monster that slithers in through the back door. Kick him out. And keep him out. Well, down to the focal point and purpose of it all. Food. In principle, all food commodities must be stored in the right manner and rotated correctly. Where appropriate, they must be attractively displayed and finally, they must be appetizingly prepared. For instance, it is not a bit of good maintaining a first-class display like this if the chefs are going to handle the steaks onto the griddle and the buns into the toaster. Food must never be touched by hand. Always use the correct implement. This, of course, leads us to point five, the importance of hygiene. As handlers of food, we have strict legal and moral obligations towards those we serve. Our great enemy is the harmful germ, the germ that will thrive on the grudely fork that is carried on the unclean fingertip or on the greasy prints left on the crockery and glass. More important, are the foods that will not be cooked immediately before consumption. This cream cake, for instance, if once contaminated, provides an excellent medium in which germs can live and multiply, and if consumed in that state, would cause severe food poisoning. Our chief weapon against the germ is cleanliness. Clean crockery, clean cutlery, clean utensils clean surroundings, and above all, personal cleanliness. Ensure all these and clean food results. Clean food is an obligation. Clean food is vital. Our last point requires an understanding of knowing just when to communicate with the customer. Probably the best example of this is extra sales. Train your staff to sense the moment when additional items should be offered. Additional sales mean additional profits, and timing is the key. Or oh, it's one of them anyway. <coughs> the presentation of the bill is another example. Present it too soon, and he thinks you're trying to get rid of him. Present it too late, and he gets impatient. Present it at the right moment, and he feels comfortable. And while we're on bills, let's see that they are made out properly. This is the correct way to tell him what he has had. If you don't, he is likely to tell you. And that's not always, um, well, <coughs> profitable, is it? This is much more like it. This time, we've got it. Remember, it's as easy to operate a well-run bar as it is to operate a bad one. And it's so much more profitable. Well, lads, that's the film. Uh, by the way, have you read the book? <laughs>